for the past uh, 10 weeks. Um, I was working with a youth program called Youth Rush. Um, it's normally geared from 16 to 25 year olds. Um, it's focused on literature evangelism. So they take students that go out in the community for 10 weeks and they knock on doors and they give out a lot of the books that we know and love. So um, Great Controversy, Steps to Christ, Christ Object Lessons, our cookbooks, some kids books and some DVDs um, in English and Spanish. And we go and to different communities um, and we pray for people and try to get Bible study contacts. And it's just a really good experience. Um, but it's also a hard experience. Um, I came straight from college um, having a lot of freedom and it's a tight schedule and we're out there for six to eight hours every day um, knocking on doors for the whole time. So it's about half of our waking hours we're spending in the communities dealing with people. Um, so it's, it's not always all <laughs> roses and um, it's not easy. So um, yeah, so I, my, one of the first lessons I learned when I was at Youth Rush, the earliest lesson, um, was to value people for what they are and also what they can be as God sees them. Um, one of my like first or second weeks there, I was in a community and it was near the end of the day. I was not getting a lot of people answering the door and a guy rode by on uh, a bike and he asked, he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? To be honest, he looked really rough. I wasn't even sure if he lived in the neighborhood um, and he seemed kind of like shifty and so I kind of just like gave him a quick answer like oh we're just students we have books that we're giving with the community um, and then he rolled up got off his bike and was like oh show me more I was like all right Lord well I'll, I'll, I'll do this I'll do this I'll canvas him even though he doesn't seem like he has anything to offer so I showed him um, one of our health books um, and he said I need this um, I, I, I'm suffering from lots of addictions. I'm addicted to, he named off a bunch of drugs. Um, and I think this would really help me. And I told him, well, if, if you're suffering from addiction, from my experience um, with people that I know, um, people who have an addiction are looking for something. And so I showed him a Steps to Christ. I was like, this is something that I think can give you what you're really looking for. Um, so I switched him out for the health book for a, a Steps to Christ, and he started crying. Um, and he said, I really need this. He shared a little bit of his, his story, how he got into the life he's living. Um, and he said he wants to come back to God. And so he gave me his last $10 in his pocket for that book. So j just not only, not only go approaching people who seem like they'd be interested or good candidates, but for approaching everyone and seeing what God will, will do. Um, and not to be surprised when God does miracles. Um, we prayed for a lot of big things this summer, and I found myself becoming less and less surprised when God showed up. Um, and to, to, to not, to be grateful, like, thank you, Lord, but to know that he's working whether or not we feel like it. Um, and this is just him showing himself. So that was one of the first times I asked God to show himself to me. Um, we were doing businesses. And I entered this like Hispanic market. I said, when, when we're in Spanish territory, I knew it was definitely not my skills at work. It was the Lord working because canvassing in Spanish was hard for me. Um, but I was talking to this, this, uh, the business owner in this Hispanic market. And he said, you know what, can you just wait? I'm really busy right now. I'm really busy and I don't have time, but I'll talk to you afterwards. Um, so I, I waited, I canvassed everyone else in the store no one else more is interested, not even in like a little book. Um, and they all started telling me, like three or four people told me, you know what, he's really busy. I don't think he'll have time for you. They're talking about the owner. So I think you should just leave and go to the next business, maybe come back another day. I was like, ah, uh, well, he told, me to, he told me to wait, so I'm just gonna wait and see what, see what happens. And when, I, when he finally called me up, he's like, I'm ready for you now. I started to canvas him. I started with a, a Steps to Christ, and he said, this is amazing. What else do you have? And anyone who's ever, ever canvassed knows that that's the cue to pull out all your books, show them everything you have. And every book I showed him, he was, he was like, wow, I need this. I need this. My family needs this. These books, are you sure? How much, how much for them? And I, I, can, I told him anywhere from $100 to $200 for all of them. Um, and he pulled out a $100 bill and gave it to me right there. I don't think a lot of us see the value in, in our books, and people out there do. They, they see these books and they see what it could out offer them, and they're willing to pay for what it, they, they know it will bring them. Um, so that, that one taught me just to stay, stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Um, 
I could have left. I could have like logically, there's other people I'm trying to get to. Um, don't want to waste, waste my time. Um, but feeling the Holy Spirit's prompting to stay and to see what God would do resulted in him buying all my books. And that same day, I was like, wow, Lord, like, look at, look at that. Um, if that's the only that's the book I sell today, like that will be, that'll be good enough. I got to the end of a street. No one on the entire street had gotten a book and I was fine. I was still happy because I was like riding the high of that, that experience. Um, and then I came to this lady. She, she wasn't interested in the book at first. She said, you know what? I have a lot of Christian books. Um, but we started talking as she asked me about nursing school. I was asking about her life. She told me that her brother had just died. Um, I prayed with her. And then as I was, she was like, gave me a hug, thanked me, gave me water. And then she was like, before you go, can I see what else do you have? And so I started showing her all the books. Um, just because I'd, <laughs> I'd learned that if you don't show people the books, they don't know what you have. So I showed her the books and she she's like, wow, I think that my church, even though I have a lot of books, my husband really likes to read. And we also have a youth group at church. And I think they would like some of these books. And so she's like, I don't, I'm not sure if I have any money though. Let me, let me see what I have. So she went in um, to the house and she came back with another hundred dollar bill. And she said, I was just cleaning my brother's house after he had died yesterday. And I found this, I think he'd want me to give this to you. She gave that to me, that was a second dump bag, all my books she bought. And she planned on, she had specific people in mind that she was going to share them with. Um, so it's a really a big blessing when the people you're trying to reach start wanting to reach people. Like when you're canvassing someone and they become a canvasser. Um, so those, that was uh, some stories that were really close to my heart. Um, but I also learned that God's the same whether or not you sell books, whether or not the numbers reflect it. Um, he, it's a low book day or a high book day, he's still working. Um, I learned to show up ready to serve people. Um, I've sold great controversies to Muslims, um, to Catholics. Um, I've given people steps to Christ who are on dialysis, who just got a cancer diagnosis. Um, I've, I've canvassed people who didn't want a book but gave a donation and told me to give it some, to someone who wanted one. And the very next door, there was someone who really wanted a Steps to Christ, or they really wanted a great controversy, and they didn't have any money, and that was for them. So it was just seeing God in all the coincidences um, is how we kind of learn more about his character. Um, but you can't, I learned that you can't really show up to people unless you're filled up yourself. Um, our, our leaders constantly told us, you can do ministry without walking with God. You can go through the acts of ministry without knowing God. Um, so they reminded us to fill ourselves up, to go to the source. Um, because a lot of times if we attempt to deal with people apart from God, when we're, we ourselves aren't connected, we can do some damage we can we can have Satan working through us because we're not we're not right. Um, so to to keep that connection up because people are complex and they're broken and it's almost presumptuous of us to think that we can approach someone and fix them or help them when we ourselves like if it's anything but God through us it's going to be wrong. So to let God work through us when we're working with people is something that I really learned. Um, for me, I learned that Bible journaling and meditation is what really fills me up. I don't think I had ever in my entire Christian experience taken a Bible verse and asked God to tell me what he was trying to say through me. I've done topical studies, prayer meetings, everything, read books, sermons, um, and these are all good because we're getting an experience from someone who's connected to God. They're connected to God, they're learning things from God, and we get to gain some of what they're learning. That's not enough. Um, that learning, loving to learn about God and loving um, to like learn more facts and I don't know, like not, Bible study apart from knowing God isn't the same. Um, so learning what helps me get to know God's character, meditating on his word, spending time in prayer, and then spending time listening to what he's saying to me back, not just asking him for things. That helps me to know God and to be prepared to go out and serve people. Um, because I was convicted that God had just been one of the most important things in my life, but he was just one of the most important things. 
He wasn't the most important thing. He wasn't the thing that I built my life upon, around. Um, and so I think that, that love, that, that search for knowing God, not just learning about God, that's what attracts people to um, Christianity. So to show that, when I went into communities, that was, that was the higher calling, is to not just show people what we know about God, but to what he's done for us and what he can do for them. Um, let's see. Uh, Matthew 7, 22 was one of the verses that convicted my heart. It says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. If you look at that verse, I don't know when the last time I've casted out a devil or prophesied for God. That These are... These are like sub, these are not subpar Christians, these are exceptional Christians, casting out devils, prophesying, doing wonderful works, and that's, that's not enough to get them to heaven. In the end, did you know God? Um, and did you make him known? We're not, I wasn't out there to convert people to Adventism, I was out there to convert them to God and to bring them closer. Um, and that's, that's where, that's what they wanted to know. At every door, it was, it was almost like their unspoken question was, do you care about me? Or do you just want to share with me something that you think is important? Like, are you just trying to sh show me what you know or showing me how much you care? Um, so I've prayed with people who haven't bought a book, and that was enough because we weren't out there for numbers or dollars. We're out there for souls. Um, let's see. The first time I asked God, asked God to show himself to me, or the second time, um, I had a really wonderful experience. It's close to my heart. It wasn't a dump bag story like the others, um, but it was towards the end of the day, and I said, Lord, I want to see you work. And so I approached this house, had a really like 11 foot tall fence, um, and I heard, heard like dogs. I like looked through the, the fence, and there was four huskies lined up. I was like, there's no way. Now, on to the next house. I'm not even going to try. And as I was standing there, this young man walked up, and he started to mess with the gate. And I asked him, like, do you live here? And he's like, yeah. I said, um, do you mind if I come in with you? He's like, I don't think my grandmother will come out. I was like, do you mind if I just try to talk to her? If not, I'll just leave. And he said, OK. So he walked with me through the yard. All the huskies are around jumping, and I was glad he was there. Um, I got to the house, and this this, um, there was Christian music blasting, first of all, and this lady came out. She was like in the middle of cleaning her house. Um, so she's like, what, what, what are you doing? How'd you get in? Like she was, <laughs> she was kind of confused. She was really busy. I told her I'll be really fast. I quickly canvassed her on a uh, Christ Object Lessons. Um, and she's, she was like, I need this. It, that, that phrase kept coming up this summer. I need this, I need this. People need what these books have, um, what they represent. And so I showed her another devotional book, it was The Steps to Christ, and she, she started crying. And she told me that the day before, she had separated from her husband, officially. Um, and she had all herself struggled with like, consistency in her spiritual walk, that she felt like she was always backsliding and always coming back to God. And she just wanted to be consistent. Um, she was also sub struggling with substance abuse issues. Um, but she's like, I, I want to come back to God. Um, I got to pray with her, the Holy Spirit was there, she hugged me, and she got both of those books. But if that, if that son, had, or her grandson, had not come up at that exact moment to let me in, and if she had not been willing to give me a moment, um, that wouldn't have happened. She ended up signing up for Bible studies. Um, and so that, that divine timing, I was, also when we ask God to work, we have to take the time to acknowledge how he has worked. Because um, I think sometimes we're like, show us, show us your favor, show us your work. And we move on to the next thing without, wow, Lord, you d did that for them and for me. Like, this feeds my soul. Um, we gain a lot from ministry. Um, it's not all about what we have to offer. Um, something else that, that I became really passionate about um, was the need for godly friendships. Um, and, like, the world is starving for the need of godly friendships. I'm not sure if I've always known how to be a godly friend, not just a friend, but a godly one. Um, there was a pastor who spoke to us who 
He used to travel around and give prophecy seminars and do health fairs, but he wouldn't do one of those unless at least 50% of the church had five non-Adventist friends. Because if they didn't, if they weren't in their own lives, reaching out to people, inviting them to eat with them, having a small group, um, doing prayer calls or prayer meetings, um, if they weren't doing that and reaching out in their own lives to non-Adventist people, um, they didn't need another prophecy seminar. And they definitely didn't need another health fair or anything else, any of those other good things. Um, because first, to practice cultivating ministry in their own, own lives was their first work. Because at the end of the day, we are the church, and ministry is not connected with an organization. It's a lifestyle. And he needed to see that before he could put on one of those services. Um, so to me, sometimes I don't know what the Christian world is afraid of. I don't know if we don't want to be corrupted by the world um, or if we just don't care enough to get involved because we feel safe. Um, but all I know is the Bible says in Luke 4.18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. We have a great commission. We already know what we're supposed to be doing. Um, and so I don't think that we can be excused if we neglect that work to get more of what we already have, to hear more truth, um, to, to go to more camp meetings. When there are people out there who just the fact that Jesus died for them is like a revelation. Like I don't know how we can sit, sit and go home at night knowing that there are people that we haven't reached out to. If they're not ready, fine. It is not up to us to make sure they're converted or um, to see the fruits. Um, but, but to even just reach out to them and to let the Lord do his work, that's our job. We don't have to wait for a mission trip um, to extend ourselves to people. Um, so that's, that's what I wanted to take away from the summer. It was, it was easy almost to be focused on living ministry when we were doing it for half of our day, every day. Um, but for me in my life, I'm going on to a job. I'm going on to the real world. Um, and so I wanted to be more faithful in not trying to spread myself thin, trying to do more for God or to be better, um, but to commit to knowing God and then to making know, him known to other people, what he's done for me, what he's done for us, um, and what he can do. Um, and letting, just letting that relationship that, that I'm working on um, overflow into every part of my life. Because when you're in love with someone, you can't hide it. So that's what I took away, to be in love with, with God, um, to enjoy his presence, and then to share that with everyone that I come into contact with. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I learned, and I felt convicted to share that with you all so that we can answer this call together and um, to, to put our priorities where God's priorities are.